What's up YouTube, James here, and welcome back to another Anno 1800 video. This one will be a short little guide about trade. So trade in Anno 1800 is absolutely essential and you can't really get very far without it, to be honest with you. Some islands might have like, for instance, hops and some don't, but one has wheat and the other has potatoes. So you really need to combine all the goods to meet the needs of your people. So trade, you you just, you know, you can't really go without it. And when I first started playing this game, I thought you could. I tried to avoid it and I thought it was too complex to deal with. And I was like, well, maybe I can just survive without it. Um, but really you can't. So let's get straight into it. So I'm going to show you first how to do charter routes. So you click on the little button in the lower left hand corner here. You click routes and you click create route. And you just click on charter out here and I have too many charter routes. Let me delete one actually. And I was just gonna say that you don't really use them too much, but uh, you kind of do. So let's uh, let's go back here and you can actually delete the route like this. I forgot to do that. But anyway, you click create route, you click charter routes, and then you go ahead and click whatever good it is that you want to, um, that you want to trade. You select that good, you select your pickup harbor, you select your destination harbor, and then you just click the little slider of how many goods you want. And then you can see the price of the route here, both for money and influence. And you can only do one route with these because they just use like little schooners and that's only like one good. They're they're not, they're only good for early game really. And so you click charter and then there you go. You're allowed a certain amount for free. And then after that, uh, it costs influence to, to invest, to create more charter routes. But I mean, let's be honest, like you don't really need charter routes once you get once you make schooners even you don't really need them so let's go ahead and move on to the next type of trade route which is just a trade route so uh so you click on routes again you click create route trade routes and then um up here you can actually name the trade route and then you can also assign it to a group you can see here i have the arctic group and the new world crown falls trade group which has a subtle you know all the trade routes under this group are listed on the main menu there. So you click this little plus sign and you select a ship and it'll show you all the available ships that can trade. It'll select combat ships too. So if that's what you want, great. But if not, then just just make sure that that's not the case, that that you know that your ship won't be attacking uh, other enemy ships or islands or along the way, like it'll slow down the route. So I'm gonna add a ship here, a cargo ship. And let's just do like a little basic one, right? So you just, you go ahead and start by just clicking on the island here. You click there, it'll be your number one island, your pickup harbor. Let's say that I want to load beer and then I want to unload at Mackinac. So I just click on the second island and click unload. Um, so that's like your very basic, just one way trade route. But let's say I want to load beer, Isle Royale, and then I want to load, I want to buy gold at Ann Harlow. So I would load the good of gold here. Oh, actually, let's uh, let's delete this one because I want to unload the gold at Isle Royale, but I want to move up the priority of the island. So we'll get to that in a second, but um, let's leave her here. But I also want to add Eli Bleakworth. So what I'm gonna do here is I would like to buy uh, zinc and copper. So I'll load that here with Mr. Bleakworth zinc and copper there, and then I'll have it unloaded at Al Royale. As you can see, I have a little zigzag pattern here, and I'll show you how to uh, how to change the order. But so I don't have Anna Harlow involved here yet, but what I want to do is actually load more beer and sell it to Anne Harlow. And then that way, that way I'll be loading 100 beer at Isle Royale and unloading in Mackinac and and uh, with Anne Harlow. And actually, when you unload a good with a, with a neutral trader like this, it'll just sell it. Like, because obviously they don't, you know, like these neutral traders, they don't have like a town with needs in them that they have to actually consume the good. You just get money out of it. So that's a pretty cool thing. And then let's say I want to load, I want to buy gold. When you load a good with a neutral trader, it'll just buy it. And then we want to unload at our rail as well. So it kind of follows this uh, chain, you know, it's it's a simple unload, unload sort of deal. Um, as long as you're paying attention to like these little unit tiles, you'll really see how it pans out. So another really cool feature with this trade menu here, you know, you can delete a certain island from the list here. 
if you want to, and that helps a lot with rearranging things. But also, you can change the order of islands that your ship visits. So let's say I don't want to visit Isle Royale first. Let's say I want to visit Anne Harlow first to buy the gold. So we'll move her up twice to be the first island, then they'll start with the gold here, and then it'll move about with the uh, with the beer elsewhere. And as you can see, these little colors on top move, they go up, but they continue right here. So that means that the trade is in a continuous loop. Um, so another really useful thing is that you can wait to unload and wait for goods. In the wait for goods button, if activated, the ship will wait until it has loaded all the goods for the station. So what it'll do is it'll just sit there until the specified amount of goods are available and it'll pick them up and it'll leave. And if you hit wait to unload, it'll wait till the storage is available for these goods to be dropped off because normally if you don't click this button, the storage, like the, the ship will just go up to the island and if it doesn't have enough storage, it'll keep all those goods on the ship and it'll just move about the trade route. And then what you'll get is these, um, these little error signs here. Um, on your trade routes, these little caution signs and, it'll, and you mouse over it and it'll say, like for this one, for instance, for the beeswax, it says um, the resource cannot be unloaded as the storage is full. So if I use the wait button there, then it would have then it would have helped. Um, but the problem is, is late game, you get to a point where you just have a whole ton of ships waiting at your harbor. I'm sure some of you have seen that before. So that's how you create a trade route. And, you know, a simple one to a complex one, you know, however you want to handle that. Um, and then I want to show you a oil route. So let's go ahead and I'll just delete this one from an oil route. Oh, actually, I already did. So we hit create route. We click oil routes and then we just grab one of these ships. Oh, actually, let's get this one off here so I can show you. Um, so let's click create route. We'll go to oil routes and then we'll add a ship to the route. And I don't know why... Okay, so we click all ships. Um, so we'll grab this oil tanker here. But um, any available oil tankers that aren't already on routes um, will show up there. And that it, that starts to happen, um, obviously, once you create them and you don't, you know, sometimes Archie will have them available once you hit investor level, but sometimes he won't. So it, it really is kind of hit or miss if, if the traders are selling them well, if Archie's selling them. But all you do is grab that oil tanker you go to wherever you have the oil stored. In my case, it's somewhere in the new world. And then you click load, you click the oil. It'll be the only good available since it's only trading oil. And then for instance, I'll go to Crown Falls and then click unload and then that's your oil route. And they can only carry 400. I wish you could carry more. Maybe that's something you can research with a scholar. I don't know. But then you click accept and then it's good to go. Um, so that is, that's all the trade routes for you. That's, that's how you do it. Um, and I want to get into a little bit more in regards to the, tra the trade ships that you have available and then the influence. So we'll start with uh, the schooner. I don't think I have actually any schooners available right now, but the schooners, they're your very, very base level trade ship. They, I mean, you can see the influence cost up here when you mouse over it. Um, it's only one upkeep is 15. They're very cheap. They only have, uh, let's see, one item slot, two cargo slots, very rudimentary and simple. And then you have the clipper, which is four cargo slots, one item slot. Uh, the upkeep is significantly more expensive, but it does provide um, four slots and it has an expedition effect, which is navigation. So that can be helpful too. And here's one right here. And of course, since it's a sailing ship, it is subject to the winds. If it's going with the winds, it's going max speed, good to go. But oftentimes it's just not, you know, it's, it's not really um, going with the wind and it's going to be slowed by like half or something. So that's the clipper. Um, the next ship, which is almost my favorite ship, is the cargo ship here. So as you can see, it has six slots and it's good to go. You know, it costs 500, um, but it has two item slots. So it's pretty nice. Um, once you once you have your steam shipyard, you can start making these. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a really cool ship. Um, the next one. Oh, we have our ships all huddling in here. The next one, which is actually my favorite, is the Extravaganza Steamer. And it has six slots too, but it has three item slots. And you can just load up, like, really, uh, like the propellers from Archie. You can put them in here, and it's it's really, really good. You can make them pretty fast. So that's pretty exciting. 
Um, that's my favorite one. And you have access to these once you get to um, like the trade level. Or sorry, once you have access with Anne Harlow or Jean La Fortune to trade, then they start selling these ships to you once you once you're there. And I don't remember how much these are. I think these are like five hundred thousand or maybe more. But yeah, these are my favorite. I think they look amazing, and I think they're just they're just great looking ships. Um, and then the next one is the Great Eastern, and this one you can only build one to start with, but you can research more um, with the scholars. But uh, this is this is actually from the Crown Falls DLC pack or the Cape Trelawney DLC. Sunken Treasures. There we go. <laughs> There's like three different names for that one. But um, this one has eight cargo slots and still uh, three item slots. As you can see here, I loaded it up with propellers, and since you can't stack like the purple ones, I have one of each color, and so that's plus 15, plus 10. So I've got plus 32% movement speed in this ship alone, and then I have another bonus from Influence, which I'll show you later. Um, but yeah, so those are the trade ships, and they're honestly, you do have you do have some choices here, but let's be honest, the only the only real trading ship is the Extravaganza Steamer. <laughs> But uh, so the next thing is influence. So you click on your influence bar up top and you go into your menu here and you will see that we have the different influence effects and then trade is one of these little tiles here. You click on the tile, it'll, it'll kind of break down where your influence is being spent in regards to trade. So your trade ships take up a certain amount of influence, same with charters. You have a certain amount of charters for free and then the airships also take a little bit amount. Oh, and I will talk about those in a minute. But as you know, the influence that you spend does go to good use. And in this case for trade, I get movement speed of plus 15% for the tycoon effect. So this is just for me spending an absolute ton of influence on trade ships. And I think you kind of get there eventually once you start getting a larger empire. And uh, yeah, it does stack. So actually, you know, 32% speed from my items um, is added to the 15. So you know, that's a really nice 47% extra movement speed on my ship alone. And they really do haul once you get to, um, once you get all those bonuses. They are really moving quick. And then that does apply to the airships, I believe. So let's take a look at one of my airships. And uh, yep, that tycoon effect does apply to the airships. And the airships are only available in the Arctic with the Arctic uh, Expedition DLC. They have four slots. They move very quickly and they don't, they don't have the restriction of terrain, you know, of, of water to take various waterways. They don't have to worry about any of that. The cargo slowdown is pretty significant, as, as you can see, but you can get items to fix that, um, to fix the unloading speed and the, the drop off time and all that stuff. Um, so they wind, they wind up being pretty handy, um, but they, but they, like I said, they do require the DLC. So um, they're not as accessible to everyone. Um, but the Extravaganza Steamer is accessible to everyone. You can buy it from the Pirate once you get to the certain level of friendliness. And maybe I'll make a guide of becoming friendly with the Pirates. So um, that's actually a good idea. So anyways, um, and one more thing. If you click on Trade Routes, you can see kind of where where all your, your whole list is. And so if I, let's say, okay, so I'm going to look at this, uh, this Trade Route for Coal which I have going to the Arctic. And as you can see here, it shows you like the line um, where your trade route follows. And if you mouse over the little world button here, you actually can change where your ship enters and exits into the instance that you're in, like the square here. And uh, since this has number two on it, it shows you where like it's coming from. So the island here is number one. So if I went to say, um, I think this is going to, uh, yeah, this is going to the Arctic, to King William Island. So if I go to King William Island, it'll show the just the opposite of what you see here. It'll show the island on number two, and then the entrance point is number one. But the exit point will be number two. And then you can change where the exit point is. And now this is particularly useful, uh, especially, let's say George was my enemy, and my sh my trade route looked like that, then his his defenses would attack my trade on this, you know, on this route. So in that case, what I would do is actually move this little world piece over here. And then that way I just bypass his defenses, don't have to worry about it. So this is very, very, very useful, especially if you're having a tough time. Like say the AI has islands that are in the corner to the new world and 
you can't really access it without getting hit by their defenses, then you can change this right here to kind of match where you want your ships to be. So that was the last thing I really had about trade routes. And I, I hope this video helped you because I know when I first started, like I said before, man, it was a very trade was a very daunting thing in this game. Um, and there are some complexities of this game that just uh, that kind of that kind of can escape people sometimes. And I know for me, I really, really enjoy making videos that help people. It, it really makes my day to see comments from you guys saying like, hey, this video helped me. This this, uh, you know, I, I could really use this video. It was particularly useful. That makes me feel really good. So if you do enjoy this video, let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, that's all I've got for you. I hope this was short enough and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.